we have, just making sure we've got everyone in the right order. Um, oops. We do. For some reason, I thought we were going to do Waitamata much much Local Board next, but that wouldn't make sense. So, warm welcome, Saffron. Um, and this is the item on the Marakau Harbour Forum. And just the last presentation leads nicely into this. So, welcome, both of you. Kia ora, thank you, Madam Chair and Councillors. Um, so I, I'm Saffron Toms, I'm the Chair of the Manukau Harbour Forum and I have with me David Home, the Deputy Chair. David's just going to introduce the forum and then I'll get on with the presentation. Uh, the forum was first established during the first term of, of the Council and it's made up of uh, nine local boards around the uh, Manukau Harbour and um, it is one of the opportunities f for uh, progress in the super city through bringing together the full catchment of the harbour, which of course is the second harvest, largest harbour in New Zealand, one of the largest in the Southern Hemisphere, and uh, has uh, incredible fishing um, resources, and but has also had a history of abuse some of which is being improved, but uh, there's still many, many issues around the, the forum, so we appreciate the chance to update you on some of our issues today. Okay, so um, the members of the Manukau Harbour Forum are from the Franklin, Papakura, Manurewa, Otara, Papatoitoi, Mangari, Otahuhu, Mangakiki, Tamaki, Pukitapapa, Fo, and Watakari Rangers local boards. Um, our objectives are is the, um, to raise the health and well being of the harbour by raising the profile of the harbour, ensuring there is a robust knowledge base to support integrated management, champion and advocate for the development and implementation of planning frameworks and projects to support the integrated management of the harbour, and ensure that there are sufficient resources, including staff input and budget, to support the forum to deliver on its vision. Um, indeed, there are a few of our objectives in, com in, in common with the current report we're looking at. Um, as you know, um, we have been advocating for. Sorry, I'm just getting used to this. Now it's gone. We'll get it back. <laughs> um, we've been ad um, advocating. F we have advocated successfully for um, the funding for the hydrodynamic model, and we thank you very much for that. Um, and we are wanting to work with the governing body and staff to explore how to lift the strategic influence of the forum and make the most of this incredible taonga for, of Auckland. Um, we're, and today we're advocating with respect to sediment control. Um, in paragraph 22 of your report, three things, are, uh, six areas are specified for, um, for action, better information, Strate strategy and policy and interventions are um, the areas that we would be talking to today. The Harbour Forum has a small but limited budget, um, which is provided for by the local boards, and just under one third of our budget recently we have spent on a, flag uh, on a pilot project to look at small site management construction, construction sites. Looking specifically at sediment runoff, concrete, and other waste runoff and rubbish. Um, about a third of the 1,003, oh, sorry, the 13,000 dwellings consented in the year May to 2018 were in the Manukau Harbour Forum, in the Manukau Harbour catchment. Um, Our small sites project was also in the Flatbush area, following on the tail of um, another project that was funded by the Howick Local Board, and our specific area was in um, feeding into the Manukau Harbour. 
um, we had approximately, in the area, approximately 300 act, 380 active building sites um, and only 170 building sites visited, the visited during the program. As you can see, 85% had, uh, had poor or substandard controls. And subsequent monitoring by the compliance staff identified that if there were any issues breached, or, bre or breaches, then the best course of action was an immediate abatement notice to the property owners. Now, our contractor was not uh, empowered to be able to, to issue those. Um, what we did find, and we found with a, um, that it sort of correlated to um, other findings, was that compliance is a key concern um, for, the mon for the control and limiting of sediment runoff as well as other issues from small site management. The Monaco Harbour Forum strongly support the focus on establishing new and innovative ways of working that use the collective resources of council to achieve earlier and more sustained compliance on small sites across the region and that are embedded in council processes and independent of staff turnover. It's our feeling from this report that there is not enough um, personnel resource or budget in the areas of monitoring and compliance specifically on small sites. We know that there is specified resource for monitoring and compliance of larger sites, but um, having done my recent um, research, um, I, did, I did a <coughs> master's thesis on coastal development, and I know that a, a predominant pattern of development in this country is actually where developers will buy a, bit, a large tract of land, carve it up, and, and then sell those sites individually. So you wouldn't actually end up necessarily having one um, site that would be considered a large site. They would be individually developed, in which case those would be considered small sites. But collectively they make up a huge portion of our development in Auckland. So um, we would support the previous submitters um, points on supporting limits on sediment volumes and consented on consented work also can um, extend the response also to sorry also to extend the responsibility of re reporting um, the forum would also support um, an advocacy point to um, emphasise responsibility, stronger emphasis of responsibility of the landowner and the developer. Um, clearly outline that responsibility, but the real key here is actually the compliance. It's making sure people know that we're serious because it doesn't matter what kind of policies that we have, <coughs> and I applaud you on strengthening the policies that we do have, but if we're not seen to be enforcing them, nobody's going to take action. Uh, we, you saw one picture there of, of a pretty shocking uh, thing with a, a toilet and things all over the site. We have a full series of reports provided by our compliance people of about 15 or 20 pictures which are quite shocking as to, to just total neglect by, by small site holders. And initially when compliance people go to the site, the people working on the site often have no responsibility and sh shrug their shoulders. At, and uh, uh, while some of the bigger uh, build, builders and developers mm. do have good compliance, uh, we, uh, we certainly need enforcement. Uh, there is a team now there, including a Mandarin speaker, which is particularly necessary in developments in this part of the city. And, and we've got the team there, but they need some teeth so that the, uh, the message will get around and, and, and uh, people will start uh, caring about what ends up in our harbours. Thank you, Madam Chair. And if I may as well, I, I had a recent experience where I saw a concrete spill on a small site and rang it in and the response sign uh, time for me was, was just way too slow. Um, 
and by the time the team got out there, the site was all cleaned up and, and barely ever any evidence of, of a spill. And it was very, very close to the, to the sea, I have to say. Are there any Dr. questions? Yeah. Sure, thank you. And just to um, also follow up, as part of our wider sediment report, Sarah Leclerc and the team will be touching on, on this as a really critical issue and just acknowledging um, Councillor Linda Cooper and her regulatory role. We are, believe you me, we're bringing the edges of this discussion in very, very tightly because we've had a, we've seen the, the large report on this with those pictures and it is untenable and unacceptable the state of some of these building sites it's just inexcusable so um, if there's any people out there building and with building sites and thinking about having building sites this is not going to happen any longer be warned so questions yeah. I'm sure we'll get a couple Councillor Walker sure. so um, I'm assuming then that your local board is interested in having some um, financial information that goes to increased monitoring and enforcement. Absolutely, I'm, I'm sure the, all of the nine boards from the Manukau Harbour Forum catchment would be interested in having that information. And just a, a, a further question then, so if, ha, has, has your board um, liaised with the other local boards in the catchment around this? Sorry, um, to be clear, I'm, I'm here as the chair of the Manukau Harbour Forum. Sure, but um, you're engaging with the local boards in the um, in the southern catchment. Yeah, I think, mm. Councillor, that, that's the entire reason for mm. the being of yeah. the Manako Harbour Forum is to make sure that that engagement mm. happens actively, mm. overseen by our capable Madam mm. Chair. The, the the local boards fund the total amount that came from the local boards in the latest year was uh, around a hundred thousand dollars. So. So obviously, uh, much bigger resources are needed for enforcement uh, activity. Um, if I may just comment on that as well, it might be relevant to where um, Councillor Walker was going. Um, so we have we have a list. I'll go back um, of the members of the forum. No. Um, so we we have Franklin Local Board as a member of the forum. Papakura, Manurewa. Otara, Papatoitoi, Mangari Otahuhu, Mangakiki Tamaki, Pukitapapa, Fo, Waitakere Rangers. Each each of those local boards has a has a representative on our forum appointed by their local board. Um, so when we advocate, we are advocating on behalf of the whole forum. In saying that, uh, there was um, there was certainly some rigorous discussion about whether or not the forum would like to put the funding towards this small sites ambassador project. There was a very strong feeling within the forum that was felt by all that this is definitely a regional issue and should be funded at a regional level, this kind of small sites compliance and monitoring. Um, but uh, the argument was made that this would be a very important advocacy piece of, you know, piece of information and evidence for advocating to the governing body, yourselves, for um, increased funding and resourcing in this particular area. Um, thank you, Madam Chair, and through you, um, thank you, Saffron and David, for your presentation. I also want to acknowledge the nine local boards and their work um, in advocating for the issues for the Monaco Harbour. I wanted to ask, please, um, is there some work being done to identify the, the main issues and how they can be addressed in the Monaco Harbour? Because I note that our water quality rate, 80%, is being spent on the Western Isthmus. So I'm um, just wanting to know, is that work happening for the, the Monaco Harbour? Thank you, Councillor. Um, we, we hope that that work will be done. We have not had official um, information about how that rate will be spent in the Monaco Harbour, and we are hoping that um, it's ongoing and that we can still have some influence on that. My understanding is that the Monaco Harbour will benefit more than was was thought before, but beyond that, um, we're still to find out. Mm. So that's today's focus is on water, and with our wider discussion around water, it's very timely to focus on our three harbours. Often we only ever hear about one. Um, Councillor Newman. 
Yeah, thank you, Saffron. A couple of questions from me. Firstly, would you agree with the idea that of the three harbours, the Monaco Harbour has the um, generally the poorest um, flushing um, and is the receptor of a lot of sediment, which is not easy to um, uh, flush away given its, its shallow nature and the tidal, tidal nature of the harbour itself? Um, I can't necessarily comment in response to the Kaipara Harbour, but I know, the, the Monaco Harbour. Yes, I know, um, in, in comparative terms. Mm. But um, if, if I don't know if we can go back to our presentation, but there's, a, there's the image that we had there relating to the hydrodynamic model was um, shows how shallow the harbour is, and I would say you're probably right, but I wouldn't want to speak out of turn. Um, <coughs> I don't know if that mm. is that possible. Are we to get back to this? Yeah. This image it's here, it's quite lovely, it's like a watery lung. Are we, are we at a point, given the nature of the harbour, that actually um, where we develop and what we allow to develop adjacent to the harbour and the tributaries that flow into the harbour need to be reconsidered from a from an, from planning perspective, the regional policy statement provisions and the areas that are permitted for development under the unitary plan um, given the nature of, of the impact of sediment runoff from those developments into that harbour? Just, I'll give Saffron a moment to think about it. I just, remembering this is just the public input or the input from the Monaco Harbour Forum, I think, Councillor, that's exactly the kind of question we want to discuss in our sediment item and in our wider water item. So I'll just ask Saffron for a, a, a quick reply. I, I value her Given view the on fact this. that we, we really want to get to the, the real item. Saffron. Well, thank you. It's, it's my view that, yes, yes definitely, um, it, is, it needs to be reconsidered. Um, we actually, last week I was fortunate enough to be invited to a book launch of Seaweeds of Auckland. Um, and the author was very excited about the opportunities within the Manukau Harbour but, um, and, <clears throat> and the new species that, that have been found there, but was also um, commented that no diving actually has happened in the Manukau because of the turbidity and, yeah. um, and by far the most detrimental effects on biodiversity in the, Manu in, in the Manukau Harbour and probably in most harbours really is sediment. Yep. Thank you. No, thank you. Point well made. And last question, Councillor Fletcher. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you, Saffron. For in, in the work you've undertaken thus far, has there been any correlation um, that you've identified in terms of mangroves and sediment? <laughs> mangroves. <laughs> uh, thank you for the question. Um, mangroves are... No, not, 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 not in the work that we've been in it, we have initiated. It, uh, mangroves are identified in our terms of reference as, as one of the strategic things that we're looking at, um, but it depends, about, it depends whereabouts you are in the catchment as to your opinion of them. Waitakere Ranges, for example, has significant ecological area overlays on the mangroves, so they're very important for the ecosystems, but further in the catchment, it's a bit more of a uh, social, ecological um, issue. Uh, certainly sedimentation um, provides a substrate for mangroves to, to grow in. Absolutely, that's not disputed at all. <coughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Fletcher. Now, it's been indicated um, Councillor Filipaina would like to move, and Councillor Bartley, would you like to second, second as yeah. our wonderful rep on the group? I'll put that. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against? Carried. Thank you very much, and thank you to both of you, and um, I'm sure you'll be really interested in the water report and the sediment report. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. So, <laughs> moving on now to local board. Input warm and warmest welcome to our Waitamata local board regarding your own initiative. Nama hinui kia koutou, tēnā koe, Madam Chair. Thank you, everybody, for this opportunity to provide local board input on the 254 Ponsmi Road. Um, member Rob Thomas, Deputy Chair, Shell Chambers, and I have been around this project since the first term, and uh, we're joined also by Member Richard Northey, of course, our Matua of the board, who knows everything that's happened 
around Auckland for the last at least 40 years. Um, <laughs> So, so, I'm watching you. <laughs> so, is that the good one? And he's got the papers um, in his briefcase to prove it. Seen his briefcase. So I am handing over to Deputy Chair Shell Chambers, who's going to lead this presentation and answer any questions. Kia ora. Morning, councillors. Our local priority project, 254 Ponsonby Road Park, is a whole-of-site project and will deliver on our community's vision, creating a safe space which provides people with an opportunity to meet, connect, participate and enjoy community li and civic life, a key focus of the newly refreshed Auckland plan. This vision for 254 Ponsonby Road has been over a decade in the making and today I am seeking your support, we are seeking your support, to approve officers' recommendation that the full site is the optimal size for a civic space park in this place and agree to retain the whole site for the purposes of re de developing that civic space. It is not proposed as a retail development. Waitemata Local Board is proud of our contribution over the last eight years to create a world-class city, but world-class cities must have great civic spaces. Just last week, as we've heard, the community-led chosen land lab design for Ponsonby Park, one of 11 proposals submitted through a pro bono design process in 2017, won the World Architecture Festival of the Future Project under the civic category. This award is reflective of the commitment, passion and local ownership that's arisen around this project as was amply demonstrated in the public forum section of today's meeting. On behalf of the local board, we want to acknowledge the tenacity and dedication of the 254 Ponsonby Road Community Lead Group that has led this project to this important milestone today, a true bottom-up led project rather than a usual council but a top-down led project. I'm, going, I'm not going to go into the well-rehearsed need for this project which dates back to 2000 where it was initially identified there was a need for a civic space in Ponsonby Road. Nor am I going to detail again the huge growth in population of the Waitemata area since 254 Ponsonby Road was purchased in 2006 for the purpose of creating a civic space. Following, as we've heard, the multitude, uh, multiple rounds of public consultation creating a high degree of public engagement in the development of this space and public feedback, which has consistently found a significant majority for the provision of open space across the whole site. We have identified this project as a key priority in our local board plan and subsequently our one local initiative. That initial public consultation, which we heard the numbers of earlier, was the then largest public parks consultation to date in Auckland Council's short history. There are clear community aspirations creating a space that provides first a place to sit and relax, second a green space and third a place where they, we can hold markets, events, play places, public art and sustainable design. Only a full site achieves the effective integration of all the desired outcomes as well as delivering the economic and social benefits of a great civic space and the winning design. This project also strongly aligns with Council's public amenity values and the Auckland plan. The board sought funding from the long-term plan 18 to 28 to deliver the community's vision for the site through a staged approach with $5.5 million for the first stage. This funding would provide for the delivery of a civic and green space, the repurposing of the existing canopy structure that can be utilised for markets, and events and developments of public toilet facilities. In the short term, the commercial use of the existing building can continue. The repurposing of the existing building and streetscape improvements will be undertaken at a later stage, with potential funding obtained through optimising other local board Panuku controlled sites and utilisation of the board's transport local capex fund for streetscape improvements. We are also open to exploring the use of LDI capex funding to support and enable the delivery of this project at the next stage. In addition, the community's uh, steering group has committed to philanthropic fundraising to contribute artworks to the project. To enable to progress the design in line with the community's expectation, a new decision is required today 
uh, that essentially revokes the 2006 Legacy Council resolution, which was made with the condition of disposing a portion of the land to offset the purchase. The Waitemata Local Board strongly supports the officer's recommendation to retain the full site for the purpose of developing a civic space and not disposing of the rear portion of the site or requiring the disposal at this first stage of an alternative site to offset the initial acquisition cost. As outlined in the officer's report, uh, there is a low financial risk to council with the preferred option three, but the implications in terms of reputational risk if the site is not developed is in, in line with the community expectation is far higher. To conclude, we are grateful for the foresight of the former Auckland City Council in purchasing this 254 Ponsonby Road site. We wish to finally get rid of the uninviting eyesore on the site and take action after decades of indecision. We are seeking your support to deliver on the community's vision in a way that responds to Waitematā's significant growth to create a world-class civic space. We are satisfied that we have gone through a robust process with community empowerment at its heart and that there was a, a whole of site project has overwhelming public support. We continue to be committed to delivering on this project and we thank you in anticipation of your support at this critical stage. Thank you. It's pretty clear. I don't yeah. think we need to have too many questions and we'll because we're going to go straight into the item. So thank you, local board. Thank you for your continued advocacy and it's nice when you see a plan coming together. Thank you. Mr. Deputy Chair? Apparently there was a question. Oh, sorry, Joe. Is it one that only the board can answer? Or is this okay? Pippa, oh, we'll just get. Just Pippa. Just go. Oh, thank you, Madam sorry, Chair, I for didn't that. See you. That's okay. Nobody does. Yes, we joking, do. Joking, don't. joking. Um, I just wanted to ask, I wanted to follow on from um, Bopsy's um, presentation, and I know, Pippa, that you're someone on the inside. So I just wanted to ask, given Ponsonby, uh, the Polynesian history associated with Ponsonby, is the, and, and the celebration recently, 70 years of PIPC Newton, is the local board supportive of reflecting that Polynesian history with the developments at the park? Thank you for asking that question because that is what crossed my mind when um, during Bubsy's presentation about how do we reflect the heritage of Ponsonby in the design and I think that is something that we would definitely want to see brought through as we go into the next stage because there is you know, more detailed design that has to be worked through. There's an overall concept and I'm sure um, members of the community working group would really be supportive of that as well and looking at how we reflect also mana whenua input as well into the design. I just want to, and I don't want to cut across this discussion because I can see the hands going up now. Yeah, Today's decision is simply whole site or not yeah. whole site. Yeah. The work, the design, the unfolding yep. of this fantastic process. This empowers us to get on with the job. This just says whole site or not whole site. So I am going to be tough and chair this accordingly. So unless the questions relate to site, whole site or not whole site, they're not just questions for now. I will cite my case. Um, <laughs> my question's to Shale. Um, Shale, when the Legacy Council made that acquisition, can you, can you give us a bit of context about the availability of land at that time and how that might have changed in a 2018 context? I think it was under your, your leadership time, wasn't it? Um, yes. 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 But that that aside, uh, they were I guess I'm really interested <coughs> to know, as someone who has worked extensively, worked legally, um, the availability of land and the scarcity of land in that area now. An undeveloped uh, non-heritage site on Ponsonby Road is rare as hen's teeth, and this site came up, and uh, I, th I, th I think it was the then Deputy Mayor Bruce Hucker who advocated for this acquisition of this site. At the time, um, a portion uh, was agreed to be sold, but I believe that was for financial rather than policy reasons um, in terms of justifying the expenditure on, on what was then a relatively expensive site in terms of a civic space. But in our, as we know, in our city fringe, uh, all sites are expensive, and this was an underdeveloped 
uh, site that, w that became available. And as I said, I don't believe there were any high policy reasons for the disposition proposal for the rear site, other than under then policy, it may have been considered slightly too large. And under the expanded policy, it's marginally larger, uh, too large, but significantly less so than we did because of the growth and the and non-availability of alternative sites. Thank you for your question. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Richard managed to pocket the Santa on the way out. That's. <laughs> we'll let you guys. <laughs> we'll let you guys battle over the Santa. Won't get involved in cheering that one. Now, <laughs> the recommendation of <coughs> thanks. Mm. Councillor um, Mike Lee, would you like to move? Thank you. Happy to, Madam Chair. Happy to second. And Councillor Fletcher would like to second. I'll put that. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against? <coughs> carried. Right. So we'll move then straight on to the. Um, yeah. Oh, right. I'll just. Thank you. Thanks, Maya. You are awesome. You'll note that we've got Eden Albert and Pukita Papa in local board input, but the item that they wish to speak on is in the confidential section, so the local board is invited to join us for the confidential section, just in case anyone's wondering where that's gone. 